Welcome back to Blaze TV, Ed Kimberley and Stu Coles, as always, and joining us on today's edition, new Blaze forward, Alec Marsh. Alec, a, a big welcome to Coventry, and, and thank you for joining us on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I just want to get straight back into uh, to looking through uh, looking through the uh, the early part of your uh, if your career, if that's cool, because uh, I noticed you spent your your Jersey boy, right? So you spent a lot of yep. your uh, your pee wee and youth hockey in Jersey, and then uh, went all the way out into Iowa uh, in the, in the USHL. That was a bit of a, a change of scenery, huh? Yeah, uh, it was a culture shock for sure. A little slower, a lot less people, um, but it was pretty nice. Uh, got to live with a really nice family for three years, and. Went to high school out there and I was going to private school at home. So I went to public school when I was out there and it was a little bit different. But, uh, you know, you spend most of your day with your teammates, which is really good. And it was just a, it was a pretty easy adjustment after a few months. And I really liked it. It was a really good time. Because the USHL is one of these leagues, uh, one of the junior leagues that's really starting to get a great reputation. Is there a lot, a lot of good players uh, coming out of there? A lot of guys that go on to have great careers in, uh, in like the NHL, et cetera. Uh, what was it like for you? What was the experience like for you playing there? Yeah, it's uh, it's actually crazy. It's, we talk about it all the time now. A few of my friends who used to play in the league, but uh, it's it's gotten a lot younger uh, nowadays. As opposed to when I was there, like when I was there, it was I was one of the younger guys, and a few other guys were pretty young too. And you kind of had knew your role of like you know waiting for your turn and stuff like that with the older guys in the league. Uh, but nowadays, like the talent's so good, players are getting so much better when they're younger. So um, there's it's just so much skill there and you see how many draft picks there are this year and things like that. So um, the improvement in the league in the past few years, just the improvement in the game overall is unbelievable. And then, uh, and then in the senior year, you crossed paths with uh, blaze alumni, Chris Paul camp. Uh, was that Sioux Falls? Yeah, we played in Sioux Falls together. Uh, I was there for a short stint. I kind of bounced around to a few teams my last year, but um, yeah, I was there with uh, Chris Paul camp and uh, another one, Dylan Eichstead. Um, oh. I didn't know you played with Dylan as well. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, I played with both of them. Uh, two really good guys. Um, I've been talking to Dylan quite a bit uh, s- since I decided to come over and uh, he's had nothing but great things to say and he's a great kid too. So I guess it'd be good to uh, reunite with him. I think we announced his signing a couple of weeks back, Stu, right? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, yeah, that'd, that'd be great. And um, to move around a little bit in your senior year, I mean, I know that happens a, a little bit more often in pro. What was that like? Was that like a, uh, another bit of a culture shock for you or was it just kind of part and parcel? Um, honestly, it was pretty cool. Uh, you know, you don't really get the opportunity to do that uh, in life. So to be able to do it when I'm pretty fairly young still um, and, you know, visit a pretty cool places. I was in Fargo uh, as well, which is a really, really nice city. It was an upcoming city. Uh, cold as all hell there, but it wasn't <laughs> too bad. Uh, but yeah, no, it was just really cool to get that experience. A lot of people don't really get that experience. I know a lot of people in Canada and stuff like that kind of live from home sometimes and play junior out there, uh, similar to some people in New Jersey and around the area. But uh, yeah, to be able to do that was was really cool. Awesome. Stu? Yeah. And you uh, you obviously finished your sort of like that junior career and then you went off to college. Um and you attended Penn State. I mean, Penn State, hugely well-known university, massive football program. But hockey is kind of a new thing there because it only got a team from what, like 2012. So, what was yep. it? Why why choose to go to Penn State? Um. So I when I visited there, I visited there when I was like fairly young still, and they didn't really have anything uh, built in yet. I kind of saw like a virtual tour of the rink and um, looked unbelievable to me. And my dad came with me as well and he thought the same thing. And after playing juniors and knowing I was like moving away from home that year, uh, I kind of knew that I wanted to play somewhere closer to home too, that my parents and family could come see. And I knew a lot of people from my area as well go there a lot. And it's just a really cool place. And I'm really glad I went there. It was unbelievable. Um, And, you know, if you go there now, you wouldn't think the program's that brand new anymore so that's like the best part about it is we kind of started the foundation there and kind of helped pave the way which is really cool so and uh, as you went to a college what did you study what's the what was the major I did criminology there um, a lot of guys kind of split up with different majors uh, a lot of business um, yeah a little bit of everything I think we had in our class which is pretty cool so it's just a really good school we're all for everything so Nice. And uh, with the, 
you know, when you said about the foundations and sort of laying the foundations of a good program, you actually won the Big Ten tournament while you were yep. there. I mean, what, how, how much of a, an experience was that, like playing in the Joe Lewis Arena, big games? Um, yeah, so we played in a lot of really big venues, but when we, uh, we won in Joe Lewis my sophomore year, it was, it was really special because I think we were like the last team to win in that rank before it was done with the Red Wings because they they're out of there now. Um, so that was really special for sure. Uh, and, and two, we had a, another player come in that year. Um, so it, yeah, it was, it was really special. Um, we, we kind of had a weird situation that year where we played three games in three days and two of them went to double overtime. Um, and you know, it just got lucky, I guess, at some points, but we played the right way and it kind of worked out for us, which is awesome. So um now they changed the playoff format a little bit different which is probably better <laughs> um but yeah no it was really cool uh, we had a lot of we had a whole fan section come in for the final game which was unbelievable and it felt like it was almost a home game really um which was awesome and you know the same thing when we played in wells fargo where the flyers play and at mass square garden where the rangers play and um you know we're getting you know 10 to fourteen thousand people at those games which is unbelievable so uh the support how was next to none it was it was awesome yeah and those games you said those, those big games you know the playoff format like you say it has changed a bit now but those those big one-off games are perhaps a little bit more common in british hockey where you have that that sort of major final or two-leg games you know what was that experience like of playing in those games that went to single ot double ot particularly in the final um it was actually pretty crazy so funny story like our the final game we, you know, we ordered food for after the game for the bus right home and, um, you know, our food came at like, right, right before it always comes like right before overtime. So like we got through one OT and we're in between after the first overtime and we're like starving and we have little Caesars pizza there. So like everyone <laughs> like, our coach then start handing out pizza and stuff like that. And, I don't know. Maybe that's what did it, but finally it ended. Um, but yeah, like I remember coming in after the first, after the, our semifinal game that went to double overtime and then the next morning waking up and we were all just like exhausted. Um, but yeah, it's kind of powered through and our goalie, thank God it wasn't a bit tired. It seemed like, so that kind of helped us a lot. Um, but yeah, no, the, the overtimes is pretty special. It's, it's pretty crazy how it all unfolded. I'm not sure that this would come as a uh, head coach, Danny Stewart approved, but they do sell pizza in the ice rink. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so you, I, I you know. might be I able to sort it out it. for some. The post game yeah, meals yeah. pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time they, they do. They have some catering guys come in sometimes as well, but uh, yeah, yeah. the amount of times there are pizza boxes stacked up when we go and do post game interviews. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, it smells mighty tempting. Ace too. Yeah. yeah we, uh, we had pizza at away game or yeah, sometimes we had different places at away games, but home games, we usually would go upstairs and there'd be food up there for us, which is usually pretty good. Some sort of pasta and chicken and stuff like that. So um, definitely got fed pretty well there. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, one, one thing that the blaze definitely do is, uh, is, is take care of the boys, um, <clears throat> which you'll find out in a, in a few weeks, you know, time's ticking yep. down to the start of the season. You know, we've been, we've been delayed over 12 months now. Um, you know, this time last year, we were we were uh, we were gearing up for a season after, you know, not really knowing whether it was going to go ahead or not after having a really successful year the year before. So uh, we're really looking forward to get this getting this one going here. Um, and speaking of getting things going, like after you graduated at Penn, uh, you turned pro. And I just talked about the pandemic. You turned pro in, in uh, the 2019-2020 season. And uh, I don't think you could have picked a more turbulent time to, to turn <laughs> pro. What, what was that like? It must have been absolutely insane um yeah it was crazy like just the fact that the season like we got off a bus and the season was just like over um you know I was in South Carolina in Charleston which is like a beautiful place to play and uh we got back it was almost like kind of nice at the same time at the beginning but then we were like all right this is kind of crazy but yeah we had like a we had like a 16 day road trip where we played like eight games or nine games we went to massachusetts went to maine then went to boise idaho and then came back and then down to orlando and then home and uh the next day like when they decided they suspended the season we actually were supposed to be getting on a bus that day to play in uh back in fort myers in florida so another three and a half hour drive Mm -hmm. um so like it was like all right like nice we kind of got a weekend off here to let this thing settle and then like next thing you know it's like oh my god this is like the end of the world almost so um 
yeah, no, it was, uh, it was pretty cool. It was a really good first year of pro. Uh, unfortunately the way it ended, our team was like in first place there too, which was really cool. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was a lot of fun there. Cause yeah, you, you run some successful teams. Like you said, I mean, Pensacola, you, you, you kind of caught fire early on, uh, got the call up to the East coast and then kind of stuck it with, uh, uh, with the Rays there after having a bit of time in Worcester. Um, yep. and then when you're in South Carolina, you, you, you play kind of picked up where it left off in, uh, in Pensacola. So that, Yep. In in a way, selfishly, I guess you were kind of bummed out that it ended when it did. Yeah, um, yeah, it was uh, it was just weird. I, yeah, I was on a really good point streak there, um, playing really well, and the team was doing really well too, which makes it a lot more fun, obviously. So um, yeah, it was unfortunate, but didn't really lose beat. I guess when I came back the next year. So yeah, no, and, and then again. Uh, a little bit of more of the same, wasn't it? I mean, we we in the Elite League didn't have a, a season at all in, in 2020, yeah. 2021. We, we had a, a mini tournament where only four of the teams were present at the end, and you know, the Blaze were lucky to be uh, uh, to be one of those. So what was that short season like um, where you were able to get some games in, in last year? It, it was crazy last year. Um, unfortunately, I had, I had my shoulder repaired last year, so I only played like 10 games last season, um, which was tough. My left shoulder, I kind of – got tweaked when I was up in uh, the East coast league and it kind of just needed to be repaired. Um, so I kind of sat the rest of the year out after that, but yeah, it was wild. I mean, like when I was in Pensacola, we had like a four on four game because of COVID and so many guys tested positive. And it was like, we played full ice four on four, three period, three 20 minute periods. And like, we only had like nine or 10 guys on the bench and guys were absolutely exhausted playing the game. Um <laughs> But yeah, like that was, it was crazy like that. But the nice thing was like being in Florida was like, there was no, like we follow policy, like league policy and stuff like that. But the Florida law is a little bit different than the rest of the country right now. So um, we kind of had more leeway of things to do, but still we were kind of pretty much going to the rink and then coming home every day or going to the rink golfing and coming home. And that was about it. Um, But it, it was, it was an interesting year for sure. Yeah, no, I mean, in terms of just the whole, like landscape of professional hockey that the, the trickle down was crazy for the amount of leagues that were yeah. canned. Uh, you know, you, you've, you've got vets coming down and still trying to buy for jobs. And uh, I mean, it, it was, it was, it was crazy. I think for everybody, did you, did yeah, you feel like, that kind of like competition for, for, for jobs too? Yeah. I mean, when I was in Florida um, in the East coast league, we like, when I got there, they were like under uh, they're, they're in bad shape because of how many people, had COVID and stuff and then guys were coming off COVID and then all of a sudden, you know, you went from nine forwards, I think to like 16 and then it's like, okay, yeah, we got to like make decisions and stuff like that, which is really tough, especially for guys that are playing well. Um, but yeah. And then also the other fact of it was like the cap with like everyone trying to mm. make the right amount of cap space. And then, you know, the whole North, the whole Northeast division, um, you know, Worcester, Reading, Maine, uh, wheel or not wheeling, wheeling played last year, but, uh, a bunch of those teams like the whole Northeast didn't play this year. So um, mm. right there, like, it's just so many jobs that are, it was just such, it was so narrow. Like, you know, you had to find somewhere to play. Um, Cause I definitely think like, you know, taking the full year off was kind of tough uh, to get back into it next year with, you know, everyone playing. So. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Stu. Yeah. And, and with that, you know, you, you, you haven't taken a whole year off, but you, you've played a few games. And then you've decided to make the the, the jump across the pond uh, and come over to <laughs> Europe and come over to Coventry. What was the the sort of the driver behind that decision? Why why make the leap now? Um, I think I'm just kind of ready for European hockey. I, I don't know. I've been told like by players and stuff like that uh, that kind of like the Euro games a little bit better for me and things like that. And um, I've seen how the Northeast is and stuff. And uh, over the past two years, and I kind of. Um, seeing the bright sides and the downsides of it. And, um, you know, I definitely knew in my career at some point I wanted to go over to Europe, um, you know, and England was just a great spot too. I, I have relatives from there. My grandfather's from there. My dad has a birth certificate from there. Um, and I'm probably going to see a good amount of family over there this year. Um, but yeah, no, I just heard so many good things about the league from so many different people. And, you know, I, I really wanted to get into it and uh, see it for myself and, um, it worked out well that my agent got another player on the team there who was previous there and, um, you know, reached out to Stu and said, like, hey, I have a guy who's interested and talked about me and kind of ended up working out really well. And he uh, he talked to Gadowski, who was my coach at Penn State, and they're, they know each other and it kind of just all fell into place and it was great fit, it seems like so. 
And was it was that the main sort of reason for Coventry in particular? You know, having that relationship with Agent and other players, like you mentioned, that obviously Dylan Eichstad has been here yeah. before. So was that the sort of the driver for that side of things? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, you know, players reach out to each other. Everyone somehow knows each other in hockey, which is crazy to think about how many players there are. But um, no, I've heard nothing but great things about the city and about the staff and the whole organization. So um, it seemed like a great fit. You know, we, we all do our research on both sides and um, just seemed like a great spot. And I'm really looking forward to it. So some of your, your former college teammates have also played in the Elite League. There's a couple of guys... Mm-hmm. That, that we've certainly spotted in our when we've done our research of uh, <laughs> uh, about looking about what's going on. So, do you, was it, do you speak to those guys as well and just sort of get a feeling for the league? And yeah, um, I know my captain, my sophomore year, played in the league, uh, David Goodwin. He uh, he had a really good career at Penn State, and uh, he's done fairly well uh, over in his pro career. I, I think I I heard through the grapevine of the alumni that he's going to play again next year and over there but I don't know if it's official yet or what's really going on there um but yeah and uh a few guys I've played with in pro have played over there um I know one kid played in Manchester this past year and then um another kid actually from school too played in Manchester my from my freshman year's team Connor Barley um and he said nothing but great things about the league and about England as a whole so um Definitely hearing the word of mouth and how positive everybody is about it makes it a whole lot easier to adjust. And when you get over to Coventry, the the uh, the Blaze fans are, have been uh, somewhat starved of hockey. So when <laughs> we're all at the Sky Dome, what are they going to expect from you when you get on the ice? What what we what do you bring to a team? Um, honestly, I I just play a hard game. Uh, I like to get pucks in. Um, I like to back check. I, I like to show my skill as much as I can. Um, kind of play anywhere up one through 10, which is really good. Um, definitely think that's kind of my upside. Um, but no, I, I, I like to shoot the puck. I like to score goals. Um, you know, I like to do a little bit of everything. But um, yeah, I definitely look, look for a guy who's going to work hard and uh, help the team win in any way possible. I, I'd say that's something that will be a big positive to Blaze fans. If nothing else, hard work goes a long way in this city. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, just a random question to kind of circle back a tiny little bit. Did you keep uh, an eye on the World Championships at all? Of hockey? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a little bit. My uh, So one of, the, one of the guys I work with, and he actually plays in our – we have a summer pro league, and one of the guys that I skate with, Anthony Stillars, he was one of the goalies for Team USA – um over there so i watched it briefly um not too much honestly yeah fair enough i I was just wondering um and i always like to throw this in there when we do something like this just to kind of gauge uh what what you know pros reaction to how well gb are doing now in the world stage because i i think to some you know the programs kind of come out of nowhere yeah absolutely um it just shows i mean i'm I'm, we keep talking about all the time like over here and stuff just the growth of the game in general is unbelievable Mm. Uh, I mean, kids are just getting better so much younger and like the evolution of like, you know, the skill work you can do and the strength and training you can do and everyone's starting younger now, the curve's just getting earlier and earlier. Um, and I honestly think it started with, you know, like guys accelerating into college a year early and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. And then you see it now in Europe, like it's just transitioning over there where guys are just getting better, younger and younger. Like I saw a player from the league this year signed an entry level to play in Phoenix um over in arizona and you know you just you just it's another example like you're just seeing the game just evolve everywhere um just getting better and better which is awesome Not for sure and, and clearly looking forward to getting here if, if you had a quick message for blaze fans watching now what would that be uh can't wait to be there it's gonna be a fun year get everybody back out there and uh yeah it's gonna be a great time Alec Marsh, it's been awesome speaking to you. Honestly, uh, we've been kind of lucky that we got some games in around Easter this year. But uh, I think Stu, I I think I'm speaking for Stu when I say we're looking forward to a a, a season proper. And uh, we're looking forward to having you as part of it, mate. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. So, guys, thank you so much for for tuning in. Um, Signing news from what this I can can gather anyway is going to come thick and fast. Hopefully, we'll get a couple more of these. Hopefully, we'll get a couple more of the new guys on the show. And, uh, well, I'm going to stop looking at clocks because, you know, (laughs) Watch clocks go slow, right? And uh, I can't wait for uh, September. So uh, from Ed and Stu and from Alec, thank you very much and uh, stay safe and we'll see you soon.